<clears throat> this coral here, I can't even remember the name of it. I bought it a while ago um, in the hopes that it would survive when this tank had actually crashed. Um, I was living in uh, the local city in town and the water was awful. No matter what I did, there was hair algae everywhere. The tank had completely died. Um, I mean, the water quality, even if I ran it through an RO system, it just killed everything. Uh, it was disgusting. Um, the tank had crashed a few years ago when I had uh, uh, left for sea, because I work away quite a bit. Um, and this is a great example of what's happening in our own oceans. You know, if it crashes... It, it may come back, you know, the coral reef systems that are out there in the in, in Australia, in the Great Barrier Reef and, and the other coral reef systems around the world, they're so delicate um, that, you know, small changes in water chemistry can really kill off the whole tank. Um, I know this in my work as a, as a marine biologist and having kept aquariums my whole life since I was seven years old. You know, you, you put, uh, in say, this is a small tank here, aquarium, and if I was to put maybe just a couple of milliliters of, of anything uh, harmful to the environment in here, you know, so much of the ecosystem would die. This isn't a true ecosystem. This is a, a closed system uh berlin style aquarium but it does in some ways mirror the uh the what can happen in uh, in the wild you know we, due to agricultural runoff due to uh plastics leaching their toxins into the water um and a myriad of different things that are washed into the ocean over time uh, look at the you know nu various nuclear fallouts that we've had at Japan, Chernobyl, um, uh, Henkley Point as well. Uh, you know all of this goes into the water and kills off everything. But what's really encouraging is that fair enough. I'm showing you this tiny bit of the aquarium, and there is a bit of our algae on it on this little old bit of a frag that I found um, but the water's in good nick now obviously it needs you know polishing up and stuff but what's encouraging is that the where these polyps are in the middle of the screen they were just a skeleton not even not even a husk just a skeleton that was left nothing and now I've found them, the water has begun to, you know, stabilise again. I've moved to a different area. Um, I'm able to get hold of some really good water now. And slowly but surely this tank is going to come alive. A lot of the, most of the uh, green hair algae that can choke a tank has died back considerably. This is one of just a very few tufts that I have it. Um, but... Look where the polyps are. I mean, they're just starting off from nothing. That little colony was completely dead. So things can turn around. We can change it. Um, and with a bit of, you know, with a bit of luck, a bit of foresight, some, uh, you know, changing activity worldwide, where the will is there, the uh, nature will do the rest really well. You know, it's all going to come back. You look closely here now. You can see even some of the zooxanthellae coming back in, where we see some of the iridescence coming into that that bottom bottom uh, polyp there. So, I mean, that's that's great. That's fantastic. This, this tank was dead for so long, but I kept it going, I just kept with it. Some water changes. I've got a, 
only two fish in this 250 litre tank very basic system there's no sump but it just shows you a bit of patience knowledge of water chemistry make all the difference we've got some great growth here on the coralline algae you see there there's a nice wide brim to all of that a nice white sorry edging that's where you see the growth in the coralline algae I've had this tank quite a while but I, as I say I go to sea quite a lot and it's it does suffer it's a, ho a hobby tank that I get to play I've had the, the opportunity to play around with in its heyday it was beautiful full of corals uh, and only basic corals the sort of stuff that will grow under fluorescent lighting uh, with no filtration it's only the rocks it's a very natural system so you know I've got a certain ratio of rocks to uh, water volume uh, comparative with the water flow and the water flow output from my um, internal impeller systems there or what you might call you know wave makers and it's working out really well um, so yeah I mean let's do something about these uh, these coral reefs let's look at the water chemistry let's see if we can't mop it all up you know Let's see if we can't uh, legislate against some of the, the the leaching of chemicals into our river systems from from agriculture, from uh, big business, from uh, industry, and we can do something about it. But water chemistry is key. Anyway, love you all.